And our next speaker is Jürgen Leuthold of the Photonics and Electro-Optics Division. So, good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here and to speak about what is hot in photonics. I'm the division chair of the Photonics and Electro-Optics Division and coming from the University of Karlsruhe, respectively now, we are Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. Let me do guess which button here, probably. This one, where do you push? This one? Good, complicated technology. So let me first introduce the Photonics and Optical Electronics Division. Uh, the photon Photonics Division actually has uh, quite a few groups working with various devices, uh, which are fiber optic related, integrated optics, uh, laser system based, uh, photonic components for optical communications, optoelectronics components, and photonic detection, as well as solar energy. They all had it by various people known in the field and uh, working strongly uh, in the related topics. Now, the photonics division is the division that basically organizes meetings around these topics, such as access networks and in-house communications, signal processing in photonic communications, or the BRAC rating meeting, optical sensors, nonlinear photonics, integrated photonics meeting, optical nanostructures, or solid state and organic lighting. Further, we have some larger meetings as the Asia Communications and Photonics Conferences or the Optical Fiber Communications Conferences. So if you're interested in what uh, is going on, then attend one of these topical meetings. And I should actually say, five of these meetings ran for the first time in 2010. You're very welcome to look into uh, these new topicals and uh, submit your own research. Now, as of today, let me talk about some few highlights in the field that are basically from within the photonics communications and integra integrated optics group. A first important result from this year is the first time demonstration of a 32 terabit transmission over a single fiber over as much as 500 kilometer. 580 kilometer, respectively. This is, just to give you the picture, the amount of data that the whole world would create if each of the people who has a cellular phone would be on the cellular phone. And if you then would take all of this information and guide it through a single fiber. Now, how did the group from AT&T and co-workers do this? Well, look, they started with 320 different lasers that are closely spaced by only 25 gigahertz and encoded each laser with 140 gigabit of data. And finally, they multiplexed them even onto two polarizations before passing them through a fiber network. And you see the new thing is, and that's all different from the past. Uh, here there is only standard fiber. There is no dispersion compensating fiber anymore. At the reception, there is not anymore a single photodite that would detect the, uh, feel, uh, the signal, but there is first a uh, wavelength demultiplexer that splits up these many signals into a single laser line again, and then there is a so-called coherent detection scheme, a scheme that allows uh, the people to detect the amplitude and phase of the signal, and then by performing digital signal processing, they calculate out the dispersion that led to the distortion of the signal. 
So the reception is not anymore a zero or a one, but it's a complex amplitude that by digital signal processing is then uh, calculated back the original shape of the signal. Now, this is was for sure one of the highlights in the photonics communication uh, field. Another highlight is the demonstration of a five terabit signal channel signal. While in the previous slide we had 332 lasers, here we have a single laser, and the single laser carries as much as five terabit of a signal. Now, in order to do, uh, transmit this much or encode that much data, several tricks were used. I mean, they started off with a 10 gigahertz signal, they compressed it down to a femtosecond pulse, then encoded it with a scheme that's not anymore a zero or one. This, uh, you need to think of this as a complex plane where each of the dots gives either an amplitude uh, or it gives a phase relation. Now, this is a so-called 16 QM signal that comprises basically four bits of information, uh, two to four bits, which gives 16 different uh, locations on this complex sphere. Uh, it's one signal, but four bits of information encoded into this signal. Afterward, it's time division multiplexed by a factor of 64 and transmitted uh, over a short piece of fiber and again coherently detected. Now, all of this comes close to what has been predicted, I would say, six or seven years ago as being the limit. Uh, six years ago, people in the communications field would have told you the maximum amount of the data we can transmit over a fiber is about 100 terabit. Now we see 32 terabits transmitted. So we come close to the limit, and we probably are going to exceed the forecast limit. And of course, the efficiencies have uh, explanations as of why the theoretical predictions can be overcome. Now, Another interesting picture is this one. When before we had transmission over a short distance of fiber, the here the record lies in transmitting a lot of data, this is uh, 15 terabit, over a long distance of 7,200 kilometer. And you see, if you take the bit rate times the distance, this gives a number. And it has been linearly increasing uh, until the year 2002. But then was a break and people started doing, instead of transmitting on, off, they started to encode information not just on the amplitude, but also in the phase. And, yeah, we see no, no longer an increase, but as soon as we, they started bringing in this coherent reception uh, stuff, then all of a sudden, both the, uh, the distance and the capacity increased again, and we are currently with this uh, paper, we are at this point. 